Hello students, today's our topic is heredity. Somewhere you feel we resemble to our parents but we have our unique feature also. That means something is moving from our parental generation to the offspring that is called as hereditical characters. And because of the presence of these kind of characters we resemble to our parent. Although in some feature we are alike our parents but we have our unique features also and this is because of the second feature called as variations. Our resemblance show to heredity. What now the point is what is heredity? Some traits are moving from the parental generation into offspring. These traits are called as hereditical characters or traits and the transmission, the mode of transmission, this one is done by chromosomes. When you were a newborn, this is usually said by your grandmother or grandfather, your eyes resemble to your mother, your smile resemble to your father. That means some characteristic features are moving from the parents, like could, some characters are like paternal characters and other are metal but you can you didn't completely match with your parents because you have your unique feature this comes from variation to study all about these a branch of science is introduced is called as genetics in which you will study about heredity and variation and their transmission. So it's a branch of science that deals with the heredity, variation, hereditical characters and how they are transmitting from one generation to another. This one, this had, genetics word was given by Batson. Earlier a scientist has done a lot of work in genetics and he is honored as father of genetics. So, father of genetics is John Gregor Mendel and father of modern genetics who has done the work apart from the Mendel or Mendelism that is Betz. First of all, we will discuss about some terminology utilized in the habit so that you can easily understand heredity and genetics. The first term is G. It's unit of heredity. It's a part of DNA that can express itself as a function or as a structure in our body. Or you can say it can control the various kind of metabolism in our body. This unit is called as gene. And from the word gene, the word organ arise is called as genetic. This word was given by Johans. Actually Mendel uh, didn't know about gene. So he uh, gave us a word factor. He told us there is a factor that is responsible for the movement of parental characteristic features into the offspring and that factor or element is nowadays known as G. The second term is called as chromosome. These are the structure on which genes can stay. So you can say Chromosomes are hereditical weaker. These are responsible to carry genes from generation to generation. These are made up of DNA threads. One chromosome can indicate by two chromatid. And these are indicated by four chromatid. You can also denote like this, 
One chromosome is made up of two chromatids like this. These are jointed at a point called as centromere, chromomere also. And on the arm, genes are arranged in a linear way. And these are chromosomes. The third terminology is called as allele. You can also say this term as alleloma. Now the point comes in mind. What is allele or alleloma? Alternate forms of a trait is called as allele. Or you can say two contrasting features of a trait. And what is trait? Trait is hereditical character. Two contrasting feature of a trait is called as a. In a simple way, you can say if you configure 24 hours, then you can configure it like day and night. Just like that, other features which are related with the traits like height of a plant. This can classify as tall plant, either a tall plant or a dwarf plant. These are alien. Color of a flower. Either this one is a colored flower or colorless or you can say white. These kind of contrasting or alternate phase of a trait is called as alien or alum. The next term comes in Heredity is dominant and recessive allele. These all the terms are correlated with each other. If you can't understand what is allele, then you cannot proceed in the next step. You cannot understand what is dominant and what is recessive. Exactly I can say, dominant is a feature that can express itself in each and every condition. A dominant feature is It can express itself in every condition. Usually this one is said the dominant feature is a feature that can express itself in F1 generation. Not only in F1, it can express itself in F2 also. So you should use the proper definition of this. The dominant feature is a feature that can express itself in every condition. While the recessive feature, this one is a feature that can express itself in the absence of dominant. If dominant is there, it can be hide easily. One more point which I want to tell you over about dominant and recessive, a specific rule is formed by various scientists that uh, dominant should be written in a capital letter while recessive should be written in a small letter. Like if I am talking about the height of plant, then a tall feature can express like capital T because this is a dominant feature and a dwarf feature should represent as small t. Now your the question arises in your mind, okay, this one is capital T because uh, the tall starts with T letter, then you can take the first letter easily. But dwarf will start with D, why we will take small t for a dwarf feature, why not small d? Because uh, how you will recognize these belong to a same trait? Now, this uh, rule is formed, a dominant feature should be written in a capital letter. Uh, for a, for a, you can say it's a train that you can take the first letter of a capital, uh, sorry, for a dominant trait. And for the recessive one, this should be written in the small of the dominant factors. This one is capital T. You can take care of capital T and the recessive can express in the small t. You can also represent tallness as capital A. If capital A is written for the tallness feature, then you have to write small a for the bar feature. 
you can also say it's capital X then you have to write small x for buff so whatever letter you want you can choose but it's a train that usually we will take the first letter of a dominant trait and the dwarf is expressed as a small letter of that now the next term comes that is homo and heterozygous trait first i'll talk about homozygous Just break the word homo plus psycho. Homo means same, psycho means pair. If same letter are written in a pair manner, then you can say the feature is homozygous. That means if you want to express tall plant that can be expressed like this capital T capital T it's a tall plant it's homozygous tall just like that a dwarf plant can be represented like this small t small t while the next point is about heterozygous Again, you can read this hetero plus zygo. Hetero means different, zygo means pair. If both the kind of alleles are written in a pair manner, then you can say it's a heterozygous trait. Like again, tallness can be right like this. It's capital T with small t. Both the traits are available. Both the alleles are available in this trait. You can say the first one is representing the tall feature. It's a dominant feature. And second one is expressing about the dwarf feature. If both the alleles are found in the same pair, in a pair, then you can say it's a heterozygous condition. Although this can express the dominant feature only, so the plant will be tall. As I told you earlier, dominant if dominant and recessive both are available, then dominant can express itself. So this plant will be tall, but it's a heterozygous tall, while the earlier plant, capital T, capital T, will be homozygous tall. 